guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, right now, what I'm doing is I'm driving out to a uh, little back road location. Um, I know it's really difficult to see me right now uh, due to how dark it is, but the reason that I'm driving out to a location uh, right now when it's pretty dark outside is because I want to see if I can capture any of the pops and burbles uh, actual backfire on camera. While we're driving out here, I wanted to go ahead and sort of discuss something, and that is the fact that I just recently uh, filled the car up, put three and a half gallons of E85 in the tank, and then I filled up the rest with 93, which is what I would normally run. Um, I decided to go ahead and give that a shot due to some feedback that I've had from some other Mini Cooper owners. Um, that are running tuning like myself and similar mods. Uh, sometimes they have the upgraded turbo, sometimes they don't. But from what I'm gathering from a lot of these guys is that running a small mixture of E85 with either 91 or 93 octane, whatever's available to you, um, it gives you a little boost of your octane level because um, E85 has a octane rating of around 100 to 105. The mix that I'm doing is three and a half gallons, 85, and then I fill the rest of the tank with 93, which should be roughly around nine, nine and a half gallons for 13 gallons total. Um, and if you put that on an E85 uh, mixing calculator, it puts you right at about E30. So basically at this point in time, I'm running the car on E30. Um, and I wanted to go ahead and give my thoughts on if I've noticed any power difference, uh, if I think it's worth it, um, and have I had any problems so far. So I'm about, I don't know, I wanna say maybe 80, 90 miles into this tank. So about a third um, of the way through. What I've noticed, uh, let's go over the, the downfalls first. So what I've noticed is there's a decrease in gas mileage for sure. As a lot of people know that run like full E85, um, your gas mileage can drop like 20 to 30%. So I've been driving around with this for a few days and right now I'm averaging about 24 miles per gallon. And that includes like maybe the first 20 miles. I did not drive it hard at all. I wanted to let the fuel get through the system, um, mix up really well in the gas tank and kind of let the ECU do adjustments if it needed to. So. The rest of the time, I've kind of just been driving either pretty regular or um, all out because I'm trying to see and data log if I'm, you know, can if I'm getting any gains. So the negatives is definitely a fuel economy thing. The other negative, at least for me in my region, this may not apply to you, is the availability. So I'm definitely gonna have to get like some gas cans that I can kind of fill up and stock the 85 with so that I can make it easier on myself not to have to drive 30, 35 minutes out to this place every single time I want to do this. Other than that, I really don't have any more negatives at this time. Um, as for the positives, so let's start with the first positive. The first positive is the higher octane. Um, usually if I want to run uh, my highest boost map, I usually will put in a fuel additive such as Torco or VP Octanium, uh, something along those lines that gives you a really nice healthy boost um, in your octane rating when using pump gas. So when I would normally use something like VP Octanium or Torco and stuff like that, it would usually, um, per calculation, put me around like 98-ish octane or so. So relatively close to like 100 octane race fuel. But the downfall of using something like that is they have, a lot of them have MMT in it. And uh, what that does is it kind of coats your spark plugs and your O2 sensors in this orange kind of residue. It's like a powder almost. It can like do some permanent damage per se to your spark plugs and possibly your O2 sensors as well. So keep that in mind. Um, so that for a positive for the E85, there's no MMT. Another positive is, yes, I have noticed a substantial difference in power. Um, I would compare this to say, I've ran like 100 octane 
actual race fuel like one time in this car and I was only able to put like three or four gallons in because it's like 10 bucks a gallon um, and I would say that this is kind of like what that feels like right now so there's definitely a huge boost in the octane level with just going you know an E30 blend one of the things that I also noticed was as I drove around and I was using my Torque Pro app, um, I watched my engine temperature. I don't know if I told you guys this, but I went ahead and I added purple ice um, coolant additive into my coolant recently. And what that does is it's supposed to kind of help uh, dissipate the heat in your cooling system a little better by basically getting into every little crevice um, that sometimes coolant alone can't get to. And so far I have zero complaints. I've had no issues uh, while I'm driving. I've had no issues idling, no issues starting up, nothing like that. Um, and I wanna go ahead and put this out here as kind of a disclaimer. Uh, I have a 2014 R55 Clubman S. So the fuel system on this car is pretty much the last revised iteration that many did um, from the factory when it came to the N18 um, and 1.6 liter minis in general. So this is the most optimal and the best fuel system that they made for these cars. Um, a lot of people know that N14 has a lot of fueling issues. Um, the fuel pumps die early. Uh, they have issues also with other things such as uh, you know carbon deposits all over the intake valves and such. Um, the N18 is less prone to that and it has a very strong fuel pump and it has very nice strong injectors too. And from what I understand, the fuel system in these can handle E85 without a problem. Um, now as far as the N14 goes, I cannot vouch for that. Um, I'm not going to tell you that every guy out there with a mini or girl, you should go out there and get you some E85 right now and just start you know, mixing it and running it. I'm not telling you that at all. Um, what I am telling you is that if you want a little bit of boost of octane, you could try a few gallons. Try it once, see how it goes. N14, I would be a little bit cautious. Go ahead and try it. If Even if I had an early N18, I would say go ahead and try it um, at your own risk. I'm not going to tell you that you might not have an issue um, and everything else, but that's pretty much my thoughts about it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get out the car, I'm going to set up the camera. Um, looks like it's pretty dead out here, so I'll just set up the camera right here behind me, give the car some revs. Um, it should be nice and warmed up now, and uh, we'll see if we can catch some flames on the pops and burbles. And as long as it stays pretty desolate like this, this is a pretty good little straightaway. I can do some short little uh, flybys and stuff for you guys so you can get a good listen to the car. All right, so what I've decided is we're going to go ahead and do like a little interior pull real quick. I'm going to drop down a second gear and just gun it. <laughs> 